Hello folks and welcome back to another Wise Gamer video. Today I'm pretty excited. I'm going to be covering Dragon Quest 11. That's right, Dragon Quest 11 finally surfaced September 4th, 2018. And it's available on Steam. It's also available for the PlayStation 4 and a couple of other consoles. But in this version, we'll be covering the Steam version for Dragon Quest 11. This may be a little lengthy, this video, because I'm going to cover as much as I possibly can about Dragon Quest XI. So the first thing that we're looking at here is my Steam page. And the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because I think this is going to come in very handy later on. So basically what you want to do here, if you're playing with a game controller, is you want to actually right-click on the game in your library. So we're going to right-click on Dragon Quest. And we're going to go right down here. We're going to see that it says Edit Steam Controller Configuration. And there we are. So in here, there is ways that you can actually map and change the gamepad to the way that you want to play the game. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this in the Steam library is because there is no game option or to be able to change the gamepad at all within the game. So keep that in mind. Only keyboard settings. So, there's one little thing I like to change, and that's it. Everything else I leave defaulted. The, uh, the select button on my controller is not active in the game at all, so it's a great button to use for this. And what I'm talking about is I like to set that up with my escape key. So, I advise if you want to use a game controller to set up one of your buttons here for the escape key and I'll get into that a little bit deeper into the video okay so here we are logged into the game and we could see it is definitely a great looking game graphics are nice and rich nice textures looks great the only thing I cannot get to show in this game is my FPS and I do have it activated on my Steam account on my Steam settings I should say but I understand by reading some forums that there may be a bug, and that's the reason why not everybody can see their FPS for Dragon Quest XI at this time. Now, what we're going to be going over in this video is the basics that I usually go over with any one of these kind of games, giving you ideas and basically about the game that I've learned so far to see if it's a game that's worth your investment in time. It has all the shops that you would normally expect in any one of these games. You could buy items, you could rest up in an inn, you could go to a pub, talk to a drunk, and all that good stuff. And then we also have our priests and our church scattered throughout the game. Uh, these can even be found in dungeons, campsites, uh, towns of course, and this is where you could save your game and do other things like resurrect a member if you don't have the items for it. Uh, purify a nasty element that's been um, cast on you so on and so forth so we know how that works so this is how you save the game and let's see here let's go into a shop and this is a bank uh, well this is just this is just an inn right here so there's not much to do here except sleep but we know Dragon Quest are known for having daytime and nighttime different events happen. So if you want more certain monsters to appear to fight, you may want to go into a nighttime mode. And with this game, it gives you the option of doing so. So if we come to an end or a campsite, it's going to stay overnight. This one only gives us that option. But some other places give you like four different options. Do you want to sleep until dawn, dusk, nighttime, so on and so forth. So we know how the inns work in most of these games. And let's see here. Voice acting. Yes, the game has tons of it. The only weird thing is the main character, which is this guy right here, does not, he never talks. I've never heard him talk. Now, I think that that's something that happened in Dragon Quest VIII, too, but I'm not 100% sure if somebody wants to comment below. But I don't... And plus, this guy doesn't have a name. By default, he does not have a name. So you have to name him when you start the game. And I named mine Hero. Seems fitting. 
Now, what I'm going to show you next is an actual cutscene, so we could hear some of the voices. I like the voices. I like Dragon Quest because it's a, it's a light-hearted game. It's funny at times. Uh, it's serious at times. And it really has a great way of keeping you on track. So the, um, the voices to me work. But some people find it too childish and all that stuff. But hey, that's what Dragon Quest is all about. So let's, uh, let's fire this up. Come on, Daddy. Let's go. The nice man who keeps bringing you drinks must be getting tired. Just one more for the road, sweetie. You never know. He might have some hot gossip that I need to hear. <laughs> Fishing for rumors, huh? Some things never change. Hmm? You're Noah, right? In the circles I used to move in, you were pretty famous. You were the guy who knew things for the right price. No nugget of knowledge too big or too small. Noah the know-it-all knows them all. That's what they used to say, huh? So we get the idea. So it does have nice cutscenes, as far as that goes. Now another thing about this game that I really, really enjoy is you don't have to go to a guide for every little thing you have to do in this game. The game pretty much keeps you on track, and I love that. So many games keep you hanging that you're constantly always doing research. But with this game, I feel like you could take off a week, come back, and you'll know what you have to do next again. Now, I'm going to show you a few reasons or a few examples of this, I should say. So if we open up the map, and the map in this game is very detailed. It lets you know a lot of stuff. By opening up the map alone, if we look to the top right, we're going to see where it says current objective. And that right there is going to give you an idea of what you have to do next. But it doesn't stop here. If we also go to, let's see here, our menu, and we go to group talk or party talk, and we click on that, they're also going to tell us What's up? what we should be doing next. So we've got to see, we've got to go talk to a guy named Noah, which is the guy that we saw the cutscene about. And this is really good too. This happens at the at the startup screen of the game. So each time you log in and you go to the uh, save that you want to load, you're also going to get a synopsis too. And it looks like this. Loading into the game now, it's going to have this synopsis of what you last did and what you need to do next. So this game really keeps you on top of things, which I really, really like. Now, it may get a little more confusing as you get further into the game. I've only got a little less than 20 hours right now. So it may get a little more dazzling as you get deeper into the game. But I see the system keeping you pretty much on track, which is really, really nice. So we could see that. Now we'll go over a little bit over the interface. we already seen Party Talk. Miscellaneous has most of your stuff. And what this is right here is that you could heal all, uh, depending on the, the uh, abilities and the items. I usually don't use that because I like to maintain and know exactly what I'm using for sure as far as items go, but the choice is yours. And it also has more info. It has traveling tips. It has a lot of different information in this game. A quest catalog people are going to give you quests from time to time and this is going to let you know which quest you still have available and what has to be done to get that quest done then of course system settings we have volumes displays graphics all that good stuff and I forgot if I already mentioned because I made a couple of takes on this the only issue I have again is my FPS not showing up at this given time now at the very start of the video, if you remember, I showed you the controller setup in Steam. This is the reason for it. Because we could see that there's really no controller settings in this 
in this menu right here but they do have keyboard settings so this is where you could set up I guess you can map it you know from the keyboard to what you want to use but if you could see I didn't have the option without going to Steam of using my escape key on the select button I don't have that option in here and now why did I do that and that's what I'm gonna show you guys next before I forget <laughs> the game for being such a modern game and a good game and a pretty pricey game at that $59.99 on Steam but definitely worth every penny if you love these kind of games especially Dragon Quest series is there's no exit game you cannot exit the game there's not a menu for it so and I have two monitors so sometimes I want to click on something like while I'm making this video I need to click on certain things on my second monitor to make the video happen so how I got around that was by mapping what you saw me at the very first start of this video now what this is going to do when I hit the select button now is it's going to pull up this little screen right here now what this does is that it makes it now where I could use my mouse without this when I'm playing the game you cannot unlock the mouse it's locked to the game so by doing this with the escape key this menu will come up just make sure you don't hit yes but that's the way you would exit the game too so if you want to exit the game make sure you save it first of course you hit yes here and now will exit the game but if you want to continue with the game after using your cursor for something then you would just hit no and you're back in the game so that's the reason why I did that and I've also just noticed this too you could actually go back to that synopsis within the game without going back to your loading screen and you just come up into here where it says the story so far and it's going to show you the same information so the game's great like I said it keeping you on path of what you have to do next and we could see here on the travelers tips there's plenty of information about battles so all about the battle system how all that works menus out in the field uh, mi miscellaneous stuff so there's a lot of different things that they cover in the game not to keep you hanging the map the map shows a lot of details in the game there's a little menu there to let you know how to use it so basically if you want to uh, zoom in you can by just zooming by using the Y button in my case and I could zoom in on different locations scroll it around and we could see that even those little purple marks there and stuff are like quest givers or people that that you should speak to so if you see any kind of like round colored circle like that it's best to talk to those people you might kick in something really cool and you could see the churches on it by the symbol right down there and all that good stuff and out in the world let's see here if we actually go to oh, let's see here okay world map there's the world map so we could see how huge this game actually is and it even shows you sparkly spots so if there's little treasures hidden it's going to show some of those up by just clicking on that and you see those icons with the feathers sticking out of them that's indications that there's something located there and you can actually even narrow it down item by item in this menu right here which is really nice now we're going to actually go out in the world and we'll get into a few battles all that stuff get into some of the basics I got about just a little less than 20 hours into the game so I learned quite a bit but I'm not a 100 percent pro at it a lot of the stuff I'm still trying to actually learn myself but as we know Dragon Quest games are usually pretty basic and that's the whole idea it's a good chill Japanese RPG game basically but it can get pretty uh, can get pretty intense at times so here we go right here we're gonna get into a little battle here and I recommend when you see the icon to hit them before they hit you just gonna start off a much better fight where you're gonna come out with the opener now basically right now 
I got the game on semi-auto. Well, it's pretty much almost auto. So all I got to do right now is just hit fight. And so they're going to heal. They're going to do all that good stuff automatically, usually. Now, do I recommend this against boss fights? At the start of the game, like the levels I'm at right now, I haven't had an issue. I've gone through all the bosses on auto without me um, doing anything manual. But that's totally up to you. Later on, that might change, though. You might want to do something manually. So we'll do manual next. Now, I lowered the game sound because it was blasting my eardrums apart. So, let's see here. Let's go up to these guys. Now, if you hit the back bumper, you could actually run really fast. Whoop. I forgot to hit him. All right, watch. He's going to he's gonna start off the fight, I guess. Let me see. Maybe not. Oh, I forgot to put it on manual. That's all right. I could still do it, I think. Here we go. Follow orders. Put everybody on follow orders. And now we got to manually put in everything. So let's see. Let's try a frizz. And there we go. But let me tell you something. The auto system works pretty damn well. So for right now, because I'm doing a lot of grinding and stuff, I'd rather keep mine on, um, on auto. So I'm going to go back to tactics. Everyone, show no mercy, and that's pretty much it. Now, if you notice, I got four people, theoretically. We see three right here, but Eric is in the group, as we could see to the bottom right. He's actually in my battle party, so he's fighting with me. The other girls haven't fully joined my group yet, but I think eventually they are going to after I complete this quest. So they're just tagging along right now, but they do some heals and a little bit of hits every now and then. I just don't have any full control over them at this given moment. Now, there's something else I want to go over for the battle too, because the battle system is not too intense. Now, the, basically, this is how you set up some of the stuff. If you go to Miscellaneous and you go to Character Builder, you're going to see in here, it's a map that looks like Final Fantasy games, kind of. You know, this is where you set up special abilities, things that they can do um, to their weapons and all that good stuff. So once you get a certain amount of points, this is where you spend them. So for Eric, we would go to, he's using daggers right now, which is considered a knife, I guess. And if I go to this, let me see if I could build one of these up. Uh, sleep ahead, that put somebody to sleep, obviously. And now we got that ability now attached to his daggers. So the best thing to do here when you use this is to actually see with what piece of equipment that they're using so you know. So he's using a sword, hero, and Eric's using a dagger. So that's base that's a basic rundown on that. But again, all the information's in the uh, in the menu there under miscellaneous. If you need to know any of this stuff. Okay, now we're going to go into this fight again. Because I'm trying to get something to kick in. If I can make it happen. So let's see. It's just, there's no way of really regulating as far as I know how to make this happen. Wow. Wow. What a heck of a hit. Holy cow. Wow, that was a crit. All right, it's called Pept. Now, what Pept is, enemies can do it and we can do it. What Pept is, is when you actually fight somebody, it kicks in, but I'm not sure what actually causes it to kick in. Now, I read on Google, it could be your HP level. Uh, once you're down a certain amount, then it kicks in. Uh, percentage of this and that. And they also have items in the game, too, called, like, Pop Pep. And what those items will do when you use them is they will make that happen for the whole group. 
or there's items that will make it only happen for one person at a time. Now what that does is that it kind of doubles your damage and it kicks in different effects. Once everybody gets pepped in your group, they will do a combo with all of them hitting at the same time, which is a very devastating hit. But again, without those items, I don't know what really kicks it in. So let's see if I, um, if we could get in one of these fights to make it kick in, but I'm not going to make an hour long video trying to get pepped. Now the ant, Animations of these fights are just breathtaking. They look really good. Uh, there's a lot of different sounds going on right now, but I did lower that in the video because it was kind of overriding what I was saying. So, see how that goes. And again, you could always change your tactics by the uh, Y button. And we'll just keep it the way it is. Show no mercy. And there we go. Okay, see the monster's pepped. The monster just got pepped. When he when when you glow, when they glow like that, that's how you could tell. Now let me show you something really cool, really quick too. A couple of other neat doodads in the game. We already talked about pet pop. If you get those, it makes it where you where the whole group can pep. And then uh, if we look at the map here, we're going to see all the different icons of things on the map. And also, let me see, where's, where's the menu? Uh, let's see, right here. We could also see those sparklies out, out in the world too. Now, it's not a total open world like playing, playing The Witcher or something like that, but it's a pretty, it's not linear. It's not linear feeling at all, which is what we expect in a Dragon Quest game. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to where we see that campfire. So if I do this, and if you could see my cursor, that's where we're going to head to, and I'm going to show you why. Now, another cool item, too, is if we go to items... Let me see where I have them located in my item bag. Now, with the items, you can only get nine at a time. So, from like a shop, they only sell you up to nine at a time. So, you'd have to buy nine, the nine more, so on and so forth, till you get the amount that you actually want. And then, the hero, can, the hero has some storage. Eric has some storage. Anybody in your group has some storage. Then, you have your item bag, your equipment bag. And stuff like that because we know Dragon Quest games were noted for they didn't hold tons of items so that was one inconvenience about the game but if you go to Shamaya wing and we use that let's see you could actually travel back to some of the places some of the old places so last saved wherever you last saved or the last place that you visited and it's going to let you know that. All right, now let's head on over. We'll use our dash button. Double check the map again. And the monsters, if you don't want to fight them, it's really easy to walk around them. Whoa, what the heck happened? Or um, run past them. So... If you're not in the mood to fight for a little bit, that's fine. Just just run right past them. They're not big into aggro, I should say. Okay, if you come across these bells, they're scattered throughout the game in different various locations. You go up to it, you ring it. Ta-da! You get yourself a nice little mount. Now, do you know dungeons in this game? If you fight certain monsters, they turn into a mount too. And you could actually ride these mounts throughout the dungeon. 
this one's really limited to where it could go because it can't go over those small logs. You have to get off of this and then walk. So we could see, now this thing right here shows up every now and then. See this little blue guy? I don't know who he is, what he does, and every time I try to go up to him and accept, he just disappears. So he's not kicking in right now for me. If anybody knows, let me know. Then you could also farm things. And you could do it right from the horse if you wanted to. And then I thought I saw a sparkle up here. I might have to get off the horse for this guy. No, it's right up here. Here's a sparkle. And there we go. Now we found something else. And that's it as far as that goes. Now, I took you to a camp. And you could also do it on the horse, too. I just got the habit of getting off of it. And if you go up to the campfire, this is where you could sleep, rest up, and you could pick what time of the day now you want to wake up at. Like I said earlier, for different events in the game. So I'm going to go for dawn. Oh, dawn. Okay. Oh, I guess I had a... Okay. Okay. How many times did I say okay? Old habit of mine. All right. And then we have a save statue. So you could save the game just like being at a church. Really handy. Really nice. Now, is there anything else before I end this video? Let me see here. There's also an item you'll get in the game, too, called Wings of Salmonade, or something like that. And what that does is that it gives you more of a chance to get rare monsters to appear. And the rare monsters can drop better, higher items in the game. So you can get, like, weapons from them, things along that nature. So that item is pretty handy to get. I believe that the people that pre-ordered the Steam Edition gets that automatically. So that's one of the benefits when they did the pre-order, when it came to that. Now, I did order my game a couple of days before release, but I never got it. So I don't know if it was a special edition I had to buy, but there is that item in the game, and that's what it's supposed to do. So I think we pretty much covered it all for now, folks, uh, in the allocated amount of time of this video anyways. And as I dive deeper into the game and find out more, I'll definitely come out with more future videos covering Dragon Quest XI. But let me tell you something, if you've been dying for a game like this, it's definitely worth every penny. You would have a blast. So until then, thanks for watching. Feel free to comment below, sub up for more future videos, and have a good day. Bye-bye.